So here's the scenario. You've got an analog signal coming out of black box circuit number one, and you need to transmit that signal all the way to black box circuit number two. Now, that's quite the distance. If they were right next to each other, you could just throw a comparator between the two. But uh, to do that, you either need a string of comparators, which is expensive and extremely slow, or you could alternate between comparators, blocks, and redstone, which is less expensive and less slow, but still not ideal. Well, today I'm going to show you not one, not three, but two methods of transmitting analog signal over long distances cheaply. So the first method I want to show you is this one right here. This involves converting the analog signal into a 4-bit binary sequence, and then at the receiving end, converting it back into an analog signal. Now, I'm going to say credit where credit is due. This is JL's design for a digital-to-analog converter, but the analog-to-digital converter is my own design. So, without further ado, I guess, um, let me go ahead and flip the switch. So that's sending in a signal of 1. You can see the 1 bit is on if we go over there. Uh, the meter should indicate 1. If I were to go ahead and send another number, say, oh, what is that, 15, 14, 13, let's send 12. Okay, oops. So now the bits indicate that 12 is being sent, and if we look on the receiving end, we can see that, well, 13, 14, 15, that's a 12. Okay. So the pros to this is it's relatively cheap, and it's extremely fast, like pretty much instantaneous. The only con is it does require four wires, no matter what. Um, which means if you don't have room for four wires, this may not be the design for you. But anyway, let's move on to how to build this thing. So for the analog to digital converter circuit, you're going to want to start with everything you see in my hotbar. Then you're going to want to determine where your input is and place a comparator. Have that go into a block with a redstone on in front of it and a redstone on top of it. Separate those two with a block. Place a comparator there set it on subtraction, then place a redstone there, followed by a comparator and a hopper. You're then going to want to put a redstone there, followed by a block there, block there, block there, and a block there, not there. <laughs> uh, you're going to put a redstone torch there, followed by a comparator there, a comparator there, and a hopper there. Then you're going to want to put a block there, and a repeater there, and that is your output. Once you've completed that first circuit, you're then going to repeat it two more times, one after the other, as following. And on the very end, instead of building a fourth one, what you're going to do is place a block here, block here, block here. You're then going to replace a repeater here and a repeater here, and then a redstone there. And this will be your ones bit, as this will be your twos bit, fours bit, and eight bit. Now this is where the dirt comes in, because you're going to want to associate each bit with a certain value. So start with the 8-bit, and you're going to want to put in these first two hoppers two and a half stacks of dirt, followed by one and a quarter stack of dirt in the next hopper. And finally, you're just going to want to place half a stack in the last hopper. And that's it. You're done. You've got yourself an analog-to-digital converter, and if you go ahead and plop something in on the input, you'll notice that that's now giving a signal strength of 1, and the 1-bit turns on. If I go ahead and rotate it, it's now giving 2. You'll notice the 2-bit is on, and only the 2-bit is on. Likewise, if I rotate it to 3, the 2 and 1 making 3 are on. Then the 4, 5, 6, 7, and finally 8. And that's as high as I can go, because unfortunately that's as high as it goes. But how it works is pretty simple. What it does is it starts at the higher order bit and it first checks to see if it's equal to or greater than 8. If it is, it'll turn on this bit and subtract 8 from that signal. It then goes to the next one, and if it's still equal to or greater than 4, it, that bit will turn on, it'll subtract 4. Then the next bit, if it's equal to or greater than 2, it'll turn that bit on and subtract 2. And when you're all set, when everything's said and done, you're either left with 1 or 0, so depending on what's left over, will determine whether this bit is on or not. So for the receiving circuit, you're going to want to get everything you see in my hotbar, and again, credit where credit is due. This is JL's design. I simply expanded it to match the output of my analog-to-digital converter. But you're going to start by locating the high-order bit and placing down a repeater, followed by a block. Then you're going to want to put a redstone torch on the other side, followed by a uh, redstone. 
Then you're going to want to put a comparator here, a hopper behind that, a comparator here, set it to subtraction mode, a block, and then a piece of redstone. Once you've done that, just repeat the circuit three more times, one after the other as showing. Then go to this end and place down a redstone block in the floor like this and place a redstone right there. And that comparator will then get that signal of 15 from that redstone. Then on here, you're going to knock out this redstone and then you're going to place a comparator right there, set it to subtraction mode, and put a block of redstone behind that. And this redstone right here is your output. Now before you go hooking it up to your analog to digital converter, the first thing you want to do is assign each input a bit value. So you're going to go over here to where the 1 is, and you're going to place a single piece of dirt. Go to where the 2 is, place a half a stack of dirt. Uh, go to the 4, place a stack and a quarter of a stack of dirt. And if you haven't figured out the pattern right now, it's exactly the same as what you've got going over here. So for the 8, you're going to want to put 2 stacks plus a half. Now that it's all set up, you're just going to want to run wires from the output of your analog to digital converter into the input of your digital to analog converter. Do this for all four bits, and then for the output, do with whatever you will. But you'll notice, again, as I rotate this knob here, the bits will turn on accordingly, but the output of the analog to, or digital to analog converter will change in accordance as well. And the way this does this is pretty much the same thing as this, but instead of checking if it can subtract it, it just subtracts it no matter what. So you have a signal of 15, and if the input is on, it will then proceed to subtract 8. Likewise, if this bit is on, it will subtract 4. If this bit's on, it will subtract 2. And if this bit's on, it will subtract 1. If all four are on, it will subtract 15 from 15, which will make 0. And it will then subtract that from 15. So zero, 15 minus 0 is then 15. So you get a full output. So this just acts as an analog inverter on the output here, allowing you to keep the circuit relatively simple. The second method I want to show you is pretty much the exact opposite of the first one. It's slow, it being that it needs to wait about three seconds to update its signal, but it uses a lot less wires. In fact, it can transmit the data over one wire, which is incredibly useful if you're kind of limited on space. So as you can see, if I, you know, I have a signal strength of one over there, if I go over here, you'll see it's displaying a signal strength of one. Well, if I were to go back over there, and increase the signal strength to, oh, let's make it 7. So that would be that one right there. Uh, it does take a while. Like I said, it takes about 3 seconds to update it. But as soon as it does update, you'll see it should jump to 7. And it'll actually pretty much follow whatever you've got going on over there pretty much instantly. But again, those changes that happen over there must happen between the intervals of updates that happen every so often. So without further ado, I guess, let's, uh, let's go ahead and see how this is built. For the pulse width modulation circuit, you're going to want to get everything you see in my hotbar right here. Start by placing a comparator here and another one right next to it facing 180 degrees. Place redstone here, here, and here. And then place a block there. Now on that block, you're going to want to put a redstone torch followed by a repeater and then another block. Now you'll notice it'll instantly start to pulsate like so. To stop this, you're simply going to want to put a lever on this block anywhere will do, and flip it on. From there, you're going to want to set a repeater right here, leave it as it is, place a comparator right here, set it to subtraction mode, and that will be your input. Then you're going to want to place a redstone right there, redstone right there, redstone right there, block, comparator, comparator, and then finally you're going to put a repeater right there, and that is your output. How it works is pretty simple. What you have here is you have a constant clock that's giving you a frequency to work off of, and every so often as a result, this repeater will turn off enabling whatever's on the input of this comparator to move into this cell. Once the cell has been stored without whatever's on the input, this repeater will remain on as long as there is something in this cell. Now, the moment this cell discharges, the repeater will then turn off, and then after that set period of time, it will then be reset based on what this clock is, thus allowing you to modulate the width of the pulse, hence the term pulse width modulation. Now, if I go ahead and stick something in there, we now have a pulse of 1. So you should see a very, very short pulse every so often popping out of the output. But if I were to go ahead and increase this, you'll notice that the pulse instantly gets much longer. And as this input will increase, the, uh, the width of the pulse will get longer and longer and longer until eventually it reaches 100%. Now the receiving circuit is a little bit trickier to build, but bear with me, it is worth it. So the first thing you want to do is 
get everything you see in my hopper, obviously. Then you're going to want to find your input and place the repeater down, followed by a block and redstone on either side. Now on this side of the redstone here, you're going to want to place your repeater, set it to three ticks, followed by a comparator and a hopper. You're going to want to place anything in that hopper just to give it a signal strength of one. Then you're going to want to place a redstone comparator here, put that on subtraction mode, put another comparator here, leave it as it is, place a block on the output of each of those comparators, and a redstone on the input of each of those comparators. Then on this side you're going to want to place four blocks like so. You're then going to want to place a redstone on top of these three blocks, and then down following this block. You're then going to want to place a redstone torch there, and then you're going to want to place a repeater right here, set it to three ticks as well. From there you're going to want to place a redstone torch right there, and a repeater right there, set that to two ticks. Then you're going to want to place a comparator right there, set that to comparison, and then place a repeater right there, followed by a redstone. Now if you want to, you can leave it as it is, and it'll work just fine. The result of it will be it'll flash the output every so often instead of displaying it constantly. Now if this works for you, you can stop right now. However, if you want the output to be displayed constantly and updated every couple seconds, then keep watching. So the first thing you're going to want to do is on this output here, you're going to want to place a block there and another block, one block in front of that. And in between those two, go ahead and place a comparator. Now from there you're then going to want to place a comparator there and a comparator there followed by a block there and a block there then place a redstone there and a redstone there go ahead and throw that comparator into subtraction mode place a redstone there then you're going to want to put two blocks here and finally a redstone torch here now this is it your circuit is finally done you can pull an output from any one of these two blocks on any side you could even pull the output here or from this redstone here it doesn't matter because it'll work just fine the same once all that is done all you need to do is then build a jumper between the output of the pulse with modulation unit and the input of the decoder and then hook up whatever it is you want to control to the output of the decoder and you're pretty much done now I will say there is a bit of a disclaimer it'll control or it'll transmit numbers 1 through 15 easily no problem okay but the only problem it does have transmitting is zero. It cannot transmit nothing, so when it does, it just kind of locks onto the previous number. But any other number works just fine. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into explanation as to how this works, because there's just too much here for even me to fully understand. So... Uh, if you want to try and figure out how it works, go ahead. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for today, so if you enjoyed these pieces of redstone circuitry, do be sure to like and subscribe. It's much appreciated, and I'm sorry if the quality of my voice is a little off. I just got done with a cold, and my voice is still recovering, so hopefully that'll get better as time progresses. But again, that's all I have time for, so again, if you enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I will be seeing you guys later.